there's a that allows people to don't have. We because. will call this meeting of the Nevada City Council to order Monday, May 8th. 2023, 6 o'clock p.m. Can we get a roll call, please? Brian Hansen. Here. Barb Mittman. Here. Dane Nielsen. Here. Jason Sampson. Here. Steve Skaggs. Here. Sandy Eric. Here. First item was approval of the agenda. Move to approve. Second. Dane, Brian. No discussion, council, please vote. Agenda is approved, takes us to the public hearing. Public hearing A is public hearing on proposed amendment to the Nevada Urban Renewal Area. Did we receive any written or oral comments? No. Uh, is anyone here to speak in the public hearing about the Nevada Urban Renewal Area Amendment? Seeing none, we'll close that public hearing. Move to resolution number 90, 2022-2023. Resolution to declare necessity and establish an urban renewal area pursuant to section 403.4 of the Iowa Code or Code of Iowa and approve urban renewal plan amendment for the Nevada urban renewal area. Move, Move to approve. Second. Steve, Jason. No discussion. Council, please vote. That is approved, which takes us to ordinance number 1045, 2022-2023. An ordinance providing for the division of taxes levied on taxable property in the May 2023 addition to the Nevada Urban Renewal Area, pursuant to Section 402.19 of the Code of Iowa First Reading. Move to approve. Second. Barb, Brian, discussion? None. Council, please vote. That is approved, which takes us to the consent agenda. Move to approve. Second. Bain discussion. None. Council, please vote. That is approved, which takes us to the public forum. Time set aside for comments from the public on topics of city business other than those listed on the agenda. No action may be taken. Please keep your comments to five minutes or less. The first item there is music at the mansion from the Nevada Historical Society. Good evening. My name is Marla Sprame. My address is 20361 620th Avenue in Nevada. And this is really a formality. I just wanted to Thank the city council, thank the city for all the support you've given that historic society in the past. Um, I love, I'm speaking for the board. We love the partnership we've developed with the city. We want that to continue. And I'm also here to invite you to our second annual music at the mansion. Um, we're looking forward to it. We hope it's bigger and better than last year. We've included more vendors. We've included longer band time and we just hope we have more people there. So um, again, thank you. And I think you have information in your packet about the flyer and um, we have all of our permissions in order. We have all of our, our legalities taken care of, but I just wanted to thank you very much for everything you've done for the historical site. It's been a great partnership and I hope that we can continue it. And it's, it's one we've had to work at, but we appreciate the work you've done. So thank you very much. Thank you for all you do. And it was a great event last year. And I know a lot of folks are looking forward to it. Is there anyone else here to speak in the public forum? Okay, you know me. And one thing I must say when they built that new future home of Nevada Field House, well, Nevada and Nevada, the people here in Nevada did not vote for that at all. And stuff. And that uh, street by Ace Hallway and Big A Times, so that street, the second street, that is no more patching. Because somebody could break a shock on that, something pretty bad. Because you passed it so many times, it's rougher than anything before. So that street needs to be torn up as soon as possible. Okay. And then I know that 
you're working on the dump place. You're probably getting closer to that. Thank you. And but that street, the one that told you it's bad, it needs to be fixed pretty quick. Because somebody could, you know, like this walk, you know, it's like a walking horse going down that street between Ace Hardware and and other places played out and 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 I think the people here in the Vader that lives in this town should have the right to say right to say what they want in this town. Don't you agree? And we do have that process. The field house you mentioned earlier was part of the Nevada 2020 plan, which was put together by the whole community giving feedback. It was oh, voted upon by representatives of the community. There were multiple public forums, multiple public events, and there were dozens of public events throughout that whole process. So there was a lot of public input. Well, this, the people even in Nevada vote for that. Well, they also donated $2 million for it. Okay, that's what I want to know, but I ain't going to support that. Because I ain't got the money to do it. Nobody will, we will never have 100% of people support any project that's done by the city, ever. Okay. So it's perfectly fine if you don't agree with certain projects, Louie. And there's like, I said, between Ace Hardware, Big Gate, Tire Center, that world's bad. It needs to be fixed, put it on quick. I hope it's soon. Uh, yeah. Well, that's what I got to say. I just hope that street gets fixed soon because it's really bad. We have staff and engineers here. So if it's not on the improvement plan, they'll take a look at it. Oh. Sorry. Um, I'll, I'll talk to Joe and then I'll get a hold of you. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's on our radar. I'll, I'll get you a, a hammer down date. I thought I should say to see where it lies on on the schedule, right? Remember we talked about we, we rated all our roads first to best like, and stuff like that. So I know it's fine. I know it's bad. So I'll get I'll get you a date. That would be soon. Yeah. Okay. Is there anyone else to speak in the public forum? None will close the public forum, move to old business A, approve pay request number 23 for wastewater treatment facility improvements, phase two from Williams Brothers Construction Incorporated, WBCI in the amount of $716,601.11. Move to approve. Second. Jason and Sandy. Uh, no discussion, council please vote. Is approved moves us to be approved pay request number eight for wastewater treatment facility improvements phase four from on track construction LLC in the amount of eight hundred fifty thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars and sixty two cents. Move to approve. Second. Dane, Steve. No discussion. Council, please vote. That is approved, which takes us to C. Approved pay request number two for Jordan Well number four, plugging in demolition from the Northway Corporation in the amount of $122,538.60. Approved. Second. Andy Barb. No discussion. Council, please vote. It is approved, which takes us to new business A, approve Alliant Electric and Natural Gas Utility Services relocation for Nevada Wastewater Treatment Facility Improvements Phase 3. Approved. Second. Barb, Brian. No discussion. Council, please vote. That is approved. Takes us to B, resolution number 91, 2022-2023, 
resolution authorizing the use of a preliminary, preliminary official statement in connection with entering into a general obligation urban renewal loan agreement. Move to approve. Second. Dane. No discussion. Council, please vote. Is approved. Takes us to C. Resolution number 92, 2022 2023. Resolution setting a date of meeting at which it is proposed to approve a development agreement with Oak Park Estates LC, including annual appropriation tax increment payments. Move to approve. Second. Jason Sandy. No discussion. Council, please vote. Approved. Takes to D, resolution number 93, 2022-2023, resolution setting a date of meeting at which it is proposed to approve a development agreement with Work at LLC, including annual appropriation tax increment payments. Move to approve. Okay. Barb, any discussion? Seeing none, council, please vote. It is approved. Takes us to E, resolution number 94, 2022 2023, resolution setting a date of meeting at which it is proposed to approve a development agreement with Cutting Edge Painting LLC, including annual appropriation tax increment payments. Move to approve. Second. Andy, Steve, discussion? None. Council, please vote. That is approved. F, resolution number 95, 2022, 2023, resolution setting a date of meeting at which it is proposed to approve a development agreement with Syngenta Crop Protection LLC, including annual appropriation tax increment payments. Move to approve. Second. Uh, Dane, Jason. No discussion. Council, please vote. There it goes. <laughs> that is approved. D is resolution number 96, 2022-2023. Resolution accepting preliminary plat for Oak Park subdivision. Moved to approve. Second. Jason and Steve, any discussion? We're getting it going. Council, please vote. That is approved. Takes us to H, resolution number 97, 2022 2023, resolution accepting minor subdivision for Martin's third edition. Move to approve. Second. Brian, Dane. No discussion. Council, please vote. That is approved. Takes us to approve City of Nevada seatbelt policy. Oh, yeah. Barb, Jason, discussion. Madam Council, please vote. That is approved, which takes us to report starting with city administrator. All right. Well, I just kind of wanted to talk about a few things. We I sent out the downtown parking and, and thank you for getting that over uh, over to me. I didn't know if you guys had any time to review that that ordinance and to see if you had any suggestions or guidance on where you'd want to go. I know when Mayor and I were talking, we we're discussing that we wanted to get it in front of Main Street members so they would be able to 
you know, go over it and share their two cents as well. So we could get all of their input input. Better to have input on the front end than when we get to a first reading. So good idea. But basically how we have it right now is it's set up every other day uh, for parking on J and K Avenue, uh, which, you know, I, I've heard from a, a couple of people that have experienced this type of parking in the past. And they said that it is somewhat difficult because they have to, move their vehicle every single day um so i didn't know if we had a preference on say a monday through wednesday have it one side and then a thursday through sunday have it on the other side or something along those lines i didn't know if that was a preference that we could do if we want to provide both options that was the feedback i got is every yeah. day switching back and forth was a bit cumbersome so if we could simplify that, that would probably be preferable. The main reason for switching those so we can clean streets. Make sure it doesn't turn into storage. Right, right. Maybe. The snow ordinance, snow ordinance yeah, would take care of the street. parking. They have to be off for snow. Right. But uh, regular. Oh, okay. All right. So even during the snow, they can't park? During the snow, they would not. Or now, you, to your point, be more the street sweeper coming yeah. through and doing right. it. Right. Regular. Uh, uh, so switch it up to half and half. Yeah. All right. Uh, the other thing was EV chargers. So are you disagreeing? Oh, not if I'm the only one. Okay. So we're cons consens uh, consensus with maybe still offer both. I mean, if you're trying to get this out to the folks that would be affected, then. Yeah, I mean, it might not be a bad I mean, idea. Just, it might be a third idea. <laughs> it's like, I know who have a look. shop might prefer fewer vehicles to be parked, so they might prefer flipping. Do we know what other communities have done in this regard? I mean, I know if I lived in a community once where I had to move every other day and I got a ticket once and it sucked and I never did it again. <laughs> like, right. it's a, it was a little nice. bit of pain, but like. Some places do odd days and even days. Yeah, that's feels like with every other day we're trying to solve a problem that we really don't have cars being abandoned there you know i think that's the main thing being able to sweep the street you know, once every every day seems excessive to me but yeah i mean that's kind of the feedback i've heard as well from people that have experienced it in the past so i i mean i i'm okay with either way presenting both cases but i I have a feeling we'll probably hear that every day would be a little cumbersome. Um, yeah. It also affects businesses if you can't park in front of them too. Yeah. People that live in apartments hogging hogging the spot for a week. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Then nobody can park in front of. Nobody can go into New Cara because it's a tenant parked in front of their store all week yeah. or three. Because it, it well, could be half, it's it could important be half the thing. block, you know, it could be, I mean, I'm maybe exaggerating that a little bit, you, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. You know, I, it probably is a little cumbersome every day too, but I don't know what the right thing to do is. You right. Know, it's, I mean, there's going to be some woes for and how whatever many, direction you go, but. Yeah. And we need to think long-term because we probably have maybe 10% of the apartments that we could have in the future. So just, just. So that's also important to keep in mind is what what would it look like if all that space was filled in the way the goal was to fill it in? I mean, it would be harder to come back from whatever we do than it. Well, and maybe in the point. future we designated a, a day a week that we do the street street sweeping, and that that's the day that they're not allowed to park or something. And you get back to Brian's point about what's the capacity of parking at that point. Yeah, we may have to address that again sometime. You know, maybe we, do. we do. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's with some of the people that own these apartments that incentivize them to maybe clean up or do something behind their buildings to help help the parking situation. You know, I mean, I I hate to throw Paul under the bus, but she's an easy one. You know, she lives upstairs. And it doesn't matter if she lives up there. It doesn't matter who lives up there. But if they're going to put a patio or something out back and then they take up all their parking and now they're going to rely on us to park in front of her business, which she probably wouldn't like either. I wouldn't, you know, having all five of my spots in front of my bakery taken up for a week because my tenants are parked in there and they do have a little control. I mean, she has a little control. She could say, Steve, 
I don't want you parking right out in front of the store. You know, you, you rent from me. Yeah, no, it's just, it's just talking J and K, right? So I mean, yeah, there aren't really in front currently. Yeah. I mean, it, we have the the flower right. buildings. But... We got another store coming. In yeah, that's true too, too. I guess you know. I guess you're not really. But is there handicap spots? Are a lot of those around the corner too? Of course, you wouldn't park in that unless. Well, well, how many businesses on Sixth Street have their staff pick park on J and K also? Yeah, yeah. few. Because I know, like the pharmacy, you guys mostly always park on the side street. Well, you know, there's when does street a lot of church yeah. um, that was designed as a public courtesy parking, and except for when you know there's a funeral or something, and that's it's not that far to walk through the bank and you're on Main Street. Yeah, so it's, it's yeah. Not for, I don't think don't the only time there's been over saying they're welcome in the church parking lot like in the past three four months in the winter time was a, a cycle and it was a car for three or four weeks that we had to plow around but we're not like chasing that have to be able to plow the state bank does are plowing so what time of day is street sweeping usually happen what time <laughs> um i've seen them out early in the morning and i've seen them in the afternoon it really depends on when when we can get to it downtown would have to be off hours yeah yeah downtown is there. usually really early in the morning yeah here's what i know for sure having lived in this world of parking is an issue in every community whatever we do probably isn't the last time we'll do it so just to throw <laughs> out a couple you know get a couple options out there and thank you steve for serving the people that we would want to have involved in that decision and see what happens. I think it's definitely good to talk about. There's been resistance to doing anything to it for a long yeah. time. So it's good to take a look at it. Yep. Part of it. And we've also so continued. Maybe during the week, you could do every other day and on the weekends. You could park during the week. I think for me, like, my vehicle, all my vehicles move every day. Yeah. yeah we have jobs and we do things. Most people probably would. Brett said it perfect earlier that it doesn't matter what we do somebody's not gonna like it so yeah. i think we just got to get the consensus and yeah okay. pick, a, pick a like sandy said pick a road and we're gonna do it and yep this is what it is so absolutely yeah uh and the other part of that too that jordan and i talked about a little bit was the what to do with some short-term spots to turn because of events all day and so that's part of the thought so, process too i did reach out to other communities about that and they said aside from the initial grumblings that they got that it, it's actually been very well um it, it's been well received in their communities and the the property owners of the, the downtown businesses have have actually uh liked the time limits because it's it's helped roll things over faster so um how we do it, I don't know, because I don't necessarily want to put the signs up on buildings and I don't want to put more signs up in our our walking area. So how we do it, I don't know, but um, I don't think it would be a bad idea since we've had some of those complaints. But again, I think that we need to involve Main Street and talk with them about it and see. Yeah, I think we need to spend some more time on that yeah. particular phase of it. Okay. Jason, was your suggestion doing both sides over the weekend or still just sticking to one side? No, oh, open, pre open parking over the weekend. It was during the week. Cool. I like that. And I'm thinking that this from a Cubbies on Main, for instance, standpoint, where someone goes out, has a few drinks too many. I'd rather they get a ride home and not have to worry about where their car is, you know, from a public safety aspect, I guess. Um, we were in downtown Muscatine recently before the floods. They have some designated parking places that are just 15, 15 on the ends of blocks so people could go and get, it's particularly for carry out. And I, I think I took a picture of one of those signs because the wording was very, I would say, friendly. Okay. Don't stay here forever. You know, but it was really, it was a 15 minute thing and just like, you know, go run and. That was Muscatine? It just, yeah, it just looked like a no parking. It's just like, it was the same size as a no parking sign with the same type of print. It wasn't, you know, like, 
I, I'll see if I can find the picture. Okay. That'll be good to talk to, I think, Main Street about too. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can share that with them. Get some thoughts. Uh, all right. So EV chargers, it was something that we brought up last last summer, I believe. Um, I did some research on it. There is a grant that's available for it. Mayor brought up that he wouldn't mind going after that again this year. So I just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on it, see if um, you know you guys all agree, and then I can start figuring out some spots. I, you know, the other thing that I was talking with the mayor about was if downtown City Hall is the best location since we're having the Pizza Pie here on a regular basis, and we have other activities that are out there. If it would be better in another area, such as maybe the parking lot. Next, uh, south of the post office, or or maybe even talk with um, a business such as Casey's to see if there is something or Dollar Fresh that we could utilize their their parking spots to do that as well. Uh, just because you know what the High V and Ames they have the Tesla ones over there. City of Ames does have several locations, two to be specific. One, a uh, couple are downtown. I think one's over by um the tyson area um so i just kind of since you guys are for it i just need to know kind of a, an area of town you want me to focus on that way i can put that in there for some history there too when we worked with hr green before the intent was to have it be something that would draw people to park downtown and shop while their cars park so that's where the downtown aspect came from um they thought it would be easier in our parking lot versus on the street because they they evaluated putting it out on the street in the actual public parking spots or in the lot and it seemed like the corner of the lot was easier from a logistics standpoint of bringing electricity to it and then also cleaning and maintenance and stuff around it yeah i that hr green had it kind of in the corner between here and the senior center was their concept at the time but that's going back what four years probably at this point karen maybe we had it out. Uh, yeah, so when I was here, it was that location, then a little bit further to the south, and then right on, right across the street from Cubby's on Main, right on the, the road there. So there's a- Those are all the ones they looked at. Okay, yeah. What's the payback on a charging station? We figured that out? That really depends on the rate that you set. Uh, basically, there is a rate that you talk with the lion about and which is typically the rate that the city would pay and then the city would have an, a rate that we would set on our end so if if someone wanted to charge their vehicle they would pay i don't know how many whatever per kilowatt and then we would basically get the revenue off of however much kilowatt it is minus their charge um, and if, we, if we checked with we've done any math on like the come and goes or whatever that are as, as charging stations and i mean we can well, probably figure out what people are charging and what it's going to cost us and it's hard what it's going to cost to put it in and are I, we subsidizing people to charge their cars at that time or so i we got 70 because then i remember hearing something like 70 grand to put in a charging station or something it's yeah like, so it really depends on what type of generation or whatever you put in so, uh, all of those notes should be in a a uh, and off to re relook at them because I can't remember the numbers, but I I know I sent you guys some figures over in a council report. I'll just have to relook. That's at what those. I was trying to recall. Yeah, I wasn't and prepared I, for this. Conversation. And I can re I can look at those, and those are the ones that are from the city of Ames. The ones that I can't really tell you more information on are are the ones that are attached to like the High V because those are actually owned by Tesla and they're they're they work with. Hy V to do that on their own. So I don't think Hy V sees any any return. Okay. Like that. No. Um, so I, I don't know the answer to that. I can I can try to find that out for you. I think but, that's important. I mean, yeah. if it's gonna take a huge amount of time, we're basically would be asking the taxpayers to subsidize people charging their dollars. I don't that's think whatever. anybody wants to do that. But no, I don't either, but I think we need to be, I think before we start putting charging stations and we got to know what the money yeah. well i think the decision tonight is do we want to bring back an action form with options out of what kind of those parameters might be 
I think we should look at it. The deadline is also, I think, May 30th for this yeah. one. So, so it's we'd have to apply soon. Yeah. Well, if we apply, we just don't get the money if we don't do it, right? I think so, yeah. I think we have a certain amount of time to ask for a reimbursement and then yeah. make it happen and yeah. do the, execute yeah. the project. Yep. Yeah. Well, since we'll obviously have to work on the application, are we on agreement as far as the downtown angle? Yes. I'd like to see it. Downtown. Okay. Is there a preference between here or the post office across from there? Here. The city owns both of those. I'd say here. This is more prominent for shopping or get people to come downtown either put them here put them on a corner on main street somewhere but and this won't be an issue but just let you know if we do do that we'll probably have to adjust the parking for this area because there may be people that are that would charge it overnight or something like that and hang out at george's or something yeah yeah um so we'll have to we'll have to get up talk about that if it comes up but that, that won't be an issue. Okay. Um, last thing is the speed cameras. I've had, a, you know, I, I don't know which direction to go. I know I've had some people that are interested in it and some people that are not interested in it. So I just, I want guidance from the whole council to see if this is something that we want to pursue. Again, this is, this is not to watch over people or anything like that. It's, strictly to capture any type of speeding because of the increase uh accidents and the deaths that we've had over on highway 30 the uh, i think it was in january and february this year and we have a lot of complaints over over highway 30 and we've had several complaints over 18th uh, we also talked about cameras for the um, parks because we have had several instances of vandalism we've had to spend quite a bit of money as of late getting some of the things changed, such as locks and things like that as well. Uh, so it, I, I'm, I'm good with whatever decision you guys want to go forward with. I just need direction so I can tell them, yes, let's move forward and get statistics for you guys, or no, we're, we're done with this and we don't need to need any more information on it. So for the parts, you're talking security cameras more? Yes, for the parts, it would be security security cameras yeah i have zero issues with that okay and they would be in areas that uh entrances you know um entrance to a bathroom so if someone starts a fire in a bathroom like they have in the past then we'll be able to capture who goes in we won't be putting them inside obviously but um yeah yeah i'm okay with security cameras definitely yeah speed yeah. cameras not so much yeah I was gonna say I'm not gonna start that argument. That, that's fine. Yeah. Right, well, speed ones on 30. No, I like the security aspect of it that we talked about. I think you know in our school meeting, you know they had some concerns with a few things around the school. I like the idea that this, whichever company I think they all have it that can get a portable unit that we can put on like a speed trailer. That um, I think PD mentioned that like when we have a complaint that this brown suburban is driving by skags 14 times a day, you know, where they can set the parameters to trigger. It keeps track of stuff like that. And after so many times it triggers PD to, Hey, you know, the same vehicles drove by the same neighborhood street that don't live there. You know, how many times, cause we don't have the staff to sit in front of somebody's house. Cause somebody's driving by all the time. I like that aspect of it. I like the security aspect of it. I really don't have a problem with speed cameras. I might be the only one on the top of the unicorn on that, but it also helps from what I understand from the short conversations I've had with Jordan that though the revenue from those helps pay for some of these other things that we wanna do as far as security cameras and mobile cameras or whatever. I also have the theory that if you're not breaking the law, then you shouldn't be afraid of the speed camera. That's my opinion. If somebody's really adamant about not having the speed camera, don't speed. 
And and I'm not gonna sit here and lecture people about how they yeah, and, I don't and no one from the side that no one actually from the city of Nevada would be watching it. Basically it would set an alarm, take a picture of it, and then it would get sent to to us. We wouldn't we wouldn't technically have access to be able to watch it twenty four seven, which I wouldn't want to have access to that either. Yeah. Personally, in general, I don't like speed cameras. The, but the Highway 30 and every time there's an accident, holding my breath, afraid it's the big one that we've all been afraid of. I mean, that would be one scenario I'd be interested in potentially hearing a proposal for because I don't want them all around town. Um, and what Brian mentioned, the security aspect is intriguing because um, the other thing that it can do is if there are certain vehicles that are known to be threats around schools, for example, it can flag those. And if you have it nearby, it can let the PD know, hey, there's been this somebody on the offender registry driving back and forth by the school. So for those type of things, it it's flags, plates it flags, that don't match vehicles, flags, plates that aren't supposed to be there, flags, and, suspended drivers. So some of that from a safety standpoint is intriguing, but no, I I, I think have, and I don't think people in the community would want speed cameras all around town, but Highway 30 is the one now. place that no. I could see people potentially. The, only, okay the with caution that. for me right now is Highway, everything's such a mess with construction right now. Like if we threw cameras out there too, I think that would, this would not be the good time to do it. I, I don't know. That's my, per and I'm living in it right now. So I'm really conscious of there, you know, you're not speeding because there's already so many other things going on, but it seems like it would be like another notch in the anti-public relations belt. I, I think that's my biggest problem is, is what it says about Nevada as a city, especially to a lot of people that are driving by and we hope come spend money here. You know, it turns us into, oh, that speed trap town like Tama, you know, that was known for years as the speed trap town. I don't know if it is anymore. I don't speak. Greater anymore. Heights. Yeah. Greater, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Been a great yeah. publicity for them. Yes. <laughs> so um, there's a couple of things going on. One, I think there's some legislature going on right now that um, this, the DOT would have to approve cameras on state highways. So we might want to look into that yeah, before did, we get too deep. It didn't yeah. pass. Um, is it? It's done. Yeah. They yeah. they adjourned. So at least this year it's not going yeah. anywhere. But. So that's Doesn't something, mean it won't next something to think about as the rules may be changing. Um, yeah, I just think it's I think it's overreach to. I'm a little concerned about I didn't realize the security aspect of it was quite that much. I if we do the security side of things, it'll match with our current security, which doesn't necessarily have all those features. Yeah. But yeah. Because we would be but going we, through a we're not, we're not reading license plates and not for the security aspect okay. of it. That would only be for the speed camera side of things. Yeah. All right. yeah. Um, okay. The security okay. aspect side of things, we would probably end up getting uh, an, an extra camera from Astro, which is who we have all of our cameras through, and it would be the same setup. So that's more yeah. just what he's talking about. If you're putting it apart, yeah. Brian's yeah. talking about that same yeah. company that does the speed cameras, does the ones that are more security focused. Yeah, to to track unusual vehicles yeah, and that stuff. That makes me nervous. <laughs> and basically, all that does is just have the PD drive by to make sure nothing's going on, but it doesn't ticket them. Okay, so can we start with security? We'll start with the security, and we'll go from the there. Parks. Yeah, parks take care of the parks. Yeah. All right, good to go. Okay, awesome. All right. Well, other than that, um, aside from what was on my my uh, report, I don't have anything else to share unless you guys have other questions for me. I would be more than happy to answer. That was about your longest report ever. <laughs> I apologize. I'll get. <laughs> you can't it. see the smile on my face. Okay. But it's there. I, promise. I can see it in yeah. your eyes. How's that? <laughs> May have some time off here soon. Yeah, just okay. get us ahead. Keep, yeah, I'm I'm trying. I'm trying here. to get us ahead, so we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Good. So moving on for reports, I just had a couple things. One, Story County Medical Center did a very nice groundbreaking for senior care, so that project's moving along. Looking forward to that being done. It'll be a really good amenity for the community, um, and it's good to have an option for folks in town to still be able to stay in town as as they age. Um, around friends and family and, you know, familiar territory. So um, also speaking of the legislature, they did adjourn. They did also pass a big property tax bill at the, at the end. 
that moved so fast that the league was having a legislative call as the house was talking about taking the Senate bill and it moved so fast that the league really didn't get a chance to do very much with it. Um, so they're working through what it looks like. They are combining a bunch of levies into the 810. I'm not sure exactly how many of ours are included in that. Um, so that that could be something we'll need to keep an eye on. And then there's all sorts of complex things like ratcheting and things that happen with it that I don't know if anybody truly understands. So which is interesting. They they want to make the make the property tax system less complex by adding elements to it that make it more complex. So <laughs> I can't quite follow some of the logic sometimes. But um, you know, the good thing is we're in a strong position long term. We have a lot of great projects and growth. So um that, you know, a, a lot of communities are gonna have a harder time. And then the other um aspect of it, you know, that the league's concerned about is just home rule. You know, what does that do to cities? Because the message from the legislatures they want to come back and they want local governments to be smaller and do fewer things so with that it's thinking through our departments and you know where does that come from what are the fewer things you know and i think this community really likes to support its library and likes to support its park system you know obviously public safety can't go anywhere so gives you a lot to think through and where that may be going in the future but um we'll have more information from that as we analyze it a little bit more and i don't know if karen's had much time to look at it when we get around for her reports but that's kind of been the, the one thing to learn more about how it does affect cities going forward from there um otherwise last thing pizza palooza this weekend so if you don't have your tickets make sure you get those knock on wood looks like it'll be a very nice day there's a lot of fun things going on and hopefully have a nice big crowd that day so. So with that, we'll move on to council reports. Pizza Pie loses this weekend. Get your tickets. You're going to give the website to <laughs> We had a very exciting and successful uh, Nevada Farmers Market uh, Thursday and every Thursday throughout the summer. So please stop downtown if you haven't already. They had somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 some vendors down there. Quite a good crowd. A lot of fun by all. Very, very good. I even came, it, it was busy when I got here and everybody said, oh, the crowd's gone. I'm like, There's still one here. So that's good that I missed the crowd and it still was pretty busy. I made the mistake of going while hungry. So I ended up <laughs> buying a lot of treats that I, I, I never would have probably bought, but they were really good. It's one really food good. truck had about 20 people standing there waiting for the food to get done. And the other one had a bunch of their menu items, all but two menu items crossed off. So I thought that was a good sign that their menu was all crossed off. Well, there were actually people going into the regular downtown restaurants as well, just because they didn't want to wait in line. So I was glad to see that. That's yep. Yeah, I think that accomplishes what we want. People downtown. Yep. Hang out. Any other reports? I guess I would like to do a shout out to Brenda and NEDC for assisting with the public art efforts that have been going on and the event, of course, at the Camelot and the Skags made sure the Camelot was open. And so it was kind of a nice promotion of that project too, but a really Cool event, and I understand I wasn't part of the school aspect of it, but that it was a really good day with third and fourth graders in Nevada, and that there are five or six new original songs that are written with Nevada in mind. So we'll see what happens next with our, hopefully with our Fine Arts Commission. I think that's where we need a home for all this stuff. From HR Green. Um, should it So, it did. Um, so just a few other items that we one that we're involved in our relocation. Uh, 
application. Let me go over there. Hello. So uh, this week at Fairway is Roundup for Reading. So you can round up your grocery bill and it's going to the Friends of the Library. And so all of that money funnels directly to library programs such as our Adventure Pass that we have where you can check out a pass to go to the zoo, um, Ryman Gardens, Science Center, the Iowa Arboretum, or the Children's Museum of Des Moines. Um, and then we have a couple great events this week. Uh, authors Joseph Gia and Fern Kupfer are going to be at the library on Thursday night. And we are also starting our partnership with the Farmer's Market. Uh, Dylan is going to be doing story time at the market for the next three weeks for sure. And then we'll see if we want to continue it throughout the summer or not. Um, all of our big kind of summer events for kids, the big, big ones, um, got posted today on Facebook so the community can kind of see some of those big events that we've got coming up in June and July. And we had four um, gold level sponsors from community, from the community, Mid-States, Story County Medical, Community Vet Clinic, and Hertz Farm Management. Um, so... We are very grateful for their sponsorship so that we could support these big, big things. And then um, our kickoff for summer reading is on June 5th from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, in Patton Park right next to the library. So, and it's an all, all ages summer reading is. So um, we encourage um, obviously kids and teens to get involved to keep up their literacy skills, but adults can get involved too and we have awesome prizes for the, the adults as well so any questions thank you thank you good evening council and staff happy economic development week so uh uh, we'll be doing a number of posts to highlight things going on uh, related to all things economic development. So um, I appreciate uh, those of you that were able to attend our business appreciation breakfast last week. I uh, had, a, was it two weeks ago? Time flies so quickly. So we had uh, great attendance and strong feedback. I have brought some of our uh, reports that were distributed at the event. So if you were there and didn't pick up one or you were unable to attend, this will give you a sense of, of things going on. I'd also like to direct your attention to the R Nevada. Um, so uh, NEDC takes the feature during the month of May uh, so we can talk about economic development. So uh, in this issue, we decided to highlight the history of Burke and the impact of our largest employer on our economy. So um, I would highlight that. And um, the other thing I'd wanna uh, just remind everybody is that we're in the midst of another round of human service funding. Remind nonprofits to reach out to me if they need an application. Those are gonna be due at the end of the month. And I got my first report back for the first round that I'll be sharing with Karen for the record. So. Got a Harmony uh, clothing closet is done with their project and put together a very comprehensive report. So uh, again, thank you for your support of economic development. Um, we have a great partnership with the city. Uh, I'm excited to be back in two weeks. Uh, we'll be bringing forth hopefully a, a nice project uh, that'll be going to the state that we'll need to have some action from this group on. So. Keep your fingers crossed that everything continues to go. I would, Jordan's been very helpful and, and uh, so we've tooled around to take a look at the projects. And uh, anyway, so we're excited about that in a couple of weeks. Tim.
I was unexpectedly out last week, so I put my memo um, at your table tonight. Um, if you have any questions after you've had a chance to look at it, please feel reach out, email, call me in my cell, call me at the office, doesn't matter. Um, just a few highlights. Um, most of our focus right now is just getting the pool ready, getting a cemetery ready for Memorial Day. Field house is moving along. Um, a lot of the wind lately has had an impact on trying to get some roofing done. So that's been a little bit of an issue, um, but uh, hopefully that'll subside and things will dry out here after this two inches or so rain we had, I think last week, but uh, moving along. And um, I think if uh, we get some concrete poured, maybe we could shoot for the first meeting in June to where we could um, have folks come out and, and walk around. It'd be a lot easier to walk on concrete than what's out there right now. So um, kind of keep that in mind. Um, you know, maybe we can shoot for five o'clock or something beforehand and uh, have you out of there and back up here in time for, for your six o'clock meeting. So, um, but we'll send out some more follow up on that. So any questions, we'd be happy to answer. All right, thank you. Good evening, council. Uh, PD side of things, uh, there's there were two candidates and now there's one. So they're setting up times to do interviews. Uh, Detective Salantano is at Arson School and uh, it's a two week program that he's in. So it's uh, I've gone to the class as well. It's, it's a fantastic class. So he's lucky to be able to get in there. It's not an easy task to get in. So uh, any questions on P&D stuff or PD stuff, excuse me? All right, P and Z uh, processing my building permits, uh, getting ready to send out uh, my mailing list for the abandoned building ordinance that we have now and starting that process. Um, and then the big one I just had a question about was no mo may. I know that some other communities are doing it, but we're kind of at the beginning of May. So I wanted to get you guys' input. If you wanted to support it, I'm fine with that, but otherwise, Boeing, so recommendations, input. Very behind normal ways. It's for um, pollinators. Pollinators. pollinators and things like that to have a better chance. At That's something with an ordinance on. we can do, or does it require an ordinance change? Well, I mean, I think you could give direction. Ultimately, if that's something you're going to continue, you're going to want to have an ordinance change to allow for it in the month of May. Um, you, know, you could give direction that that's not going to be the priority for this month if that's if that's the intent and then we can work on some ordinance language but definitely a hot topic yeah my thought would be that's probably something we want to have some public input on before because i could see other people being really angry if all of a sudden their neighbors aren't mowing and we haven't talked well, about I, it and you just get complaints just and, down. there's some yards that are full yeah I've already got the message. Yeah. Yeah. So the, I mean, I think it's a big thing that other communities are doing is, is you're announcing that you're going to do no mo may before and some have and yard signs knows. that they're putting up something to show that that's why they're not mowing for may, not just. I wouldn't mind not mowing in may. <laughs> <laughs> Next June kind of tough. Every and five days I'll do it in yeah. may. Then I will. You're, then you're. Iron out to have it paid out and all that. Yeah, so basically. get it. I just, I, I didn't, it didn't dawn on me last month to bring it up to this month. And then I've had a couple people ask, and I'm like, well, we're kind of at that point where it's already started. So, um, but yeah, I'm all right with continuing our ordinance as is and looking we'll uh, back to for the community year. for input on it for later years. Next year, have it have some signs available for people if they want to participate in it, then here, put a sign in your yard so people understand what you're doing. Are we able to selectively enforce a law contingent upon them having a yard sign though? No. No. We'd have it's to only be for pay. It's really for publicity to your neighbor um, than it is to anyone else. And but for no. people coming to town, like right. are right. all the yards yeah. crappy and debate? Right. Yeah, we've seen some communities too also talk about um, you know, they continue with the standard ordinance for the front yard and obviously the backyard, you don't care, but you've got signs available. Unless you've um, got a corner lot and no fence. If you've got people looking over and yeah. Yep. Yep. 
Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So maybe put in your calendar to talk about it before next May and in March. Yeah. Organized. on your Missouri Palm Pilot. We're good. Thanks, Council. And if you've ever really wanted to dunk hunting in the dunk tank, Saturday's your chance. Bring your money. <laughs> I'll put it on my calendar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Aaron. I'm good. Aaron. Well, you have my report. Um, a couple of them. The as far as the legislation, I tried to read the <laughs> Yeah, because it was in a sixteen hundred pages or whatever. A lot of publicly voted levies are folded into there, which got me thinking what happens to our trail levy and our library levy. Do those get folded in the general levy? Yeah. The ones that stood out to me was the emergency levy and the civic center levy. I think I say think because it's very confusing to read the bill, but I think um those two would definitely affect us um by a huge amount because they're set. Um, at a certain rate, so can't collect all that much, you know, maybe a hundred thousand there, but um, until we get some guidance on, I don't even think the state knows how it's going to work. I would hate to say too much. Um, do have some good rate, uh, news about our bond rating. We had that call and it should be released. I think it's still confidential yet, but um, should be released tomorrow or the next day. So. That's some good news. Um, I'm working through that process yeah, for now. And I will apologize about the HR Green uh, memo. We'll send that out because we got it. But for some reason, it didn't get in the packet. It's kind of a rush there at the end. So, so we'll send it send to you. But that's <clears throat> all I have. Do you have any other questions? Aaron. Any council, anything else before we go into closed session? None. The next thing is closed session pursuant to Iowa Code Section 21.51I to evaluate the professional competency of an individual whose appointment, hiring, performance, or discharge is being considered when necessary to prevent needless and irreparable injury to that individual's reputation and appropriate follow up. Move to go to closed session. Second. Kane. Council, please vote. And when you're in closed session. <laughs>